up, Drama Alert Nation. I'm your host, Keller Keemstar. Let's go right into the news. Guys, today we have a debate with the YouTuber Dream versus John Swan. However, uh, right before this debate was about to happen, right when we were about to record, John Swan backed out. He had this statement. My manager has advised me not to go on Dromler at this time and respond on my own platform. I wish you luck in the interview. <laughs> well, we're going to get into Dream. We're going to get into all of this uh, uh, on why there's a debate in the first place. But first, your thoughts on John Swan backing out. Uh, it's definitely interesting. I, I, it probably has to do with the fact that I, I streamed a little before this talking about it. And so I, I, I talked about a lot of different stuff on it and I brought a lot of receipts and screenshots. And I think he probably was a little scared about that because um, I, I would be coming in with with all the receipts and facts regarding it and he wouldn't. So. Yeah, you came on that stream with a lot of information. We're going to get into it in a second, but uh, he did send me a second statement. So the second statement is, my manager has advised me not to go on Drumler at this time and respond in detail later on. I pride myself in thoroughness and research. Dream dropped a stream that he had prepared hours for, and I had 10 minutes to prepare for this interview on Drumler. I will be responding, but not here. I wish you luck in the interview, which is basically the same thing. Look, here's the thing, right? Yeah. If you lived it, if you were there, right? Why can't you just get on and talk about it? Right? Like it just, it makes yeah. no sense to me. Um, but, uh, personally, I feel like, you know, this, this is a weak move on John Swan's part. Uh, but anyhow, let's get into uh, all this. Why, why is there this beef? How did this happen? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, it, it probably shouldn't have. I think everything, especially since I've been having such big growth recently, everything just blows out of proportion. Like, the the smallest thing can become like a huge deal. So I, I posted a Reddit comment about an experience I had with him a year ago on a random subreddit, and it was actually a subreddit that was made um, to criticize me. It wasn't even like my my fan subreddit or anything, and it had 20 likes. And um, I guess he saw it. Probably one of his friends <laughs> sent it to him, and uh, he posted a Twitter thread about it. Now, talking about saying I'm a liar and so on and so forth. Now, in that Reddit post that you made, you were just basically talking about an experience that you had with John Swan where, you know, somebody was on, allegedly somebody was on John Swan's account uh, saying horrible stuff and there was a fake dream account also saying horrible stuff. Can you explain this situation? What what happened? Yeah, so I got a DM from somebody who messaged me and said, hey, somebody's impersonating you. And this was a year ago. And I was like, okay, who's impersonating me? And they sent me screenshots and they said that, oh, it was it was John Swan. And I was like, okay, well, how is it John Swan? And they sent me screenshots from his account saying that he basically, he was saying, he sent them a Discord saying it was me. And then that Discord talked to them saying stuff as if it was me, weird, weird stuff and whatever. And then, um, so that's, that's, so then I messaged John Swan and then John Swan went, oh, I, I had no idea that was happening, blah, blah, blah. And then, and then basically that's, that's kind of, that's kind of the, the, it, that's kind of what happened. So basically he was being really weird in his messages and then he was being weird on the dream account. And then he said that he had, um, his, uh, he, well, he, he kept changing which, who it was, but he said it was his cousin. He said it was his sister. And then he also said it was a random person who, um, was a family friend's kid that he went to their house and left his account on in their, and, and, and their, uh, in their house. And then they used his account and did weird stuff. And, um, I, obviously I had reason to, I have plenty of reason that I talked about on the stream, like to not believe that. Um, and that's, that's kind of how it started. Well, I, I expressed yeah, that John Swan's already, already, I just expressed that. Ah, I'm not sure. I was, I, maybe that's cause he was saying stuff on Twitter. And so I expressed my, my concern with that. But. It's a shame that John Swan isn't here where he, you know, cause you know, I'd like to represent his side and it's kind of hard because he's not here. Right. But, uh, the way I yeah. understand it is John Swan is basically saying, look, I was at a, a friend's house and the friend wanted to know about YouTube and was, you know, impressed that John Swan knew all these YouTubers. So he kind of went on discord to show him the YouTubers that he's in contact with. And then he left that logged into that person's computer. And that person was the one that was sending all these inappropriate messages. And then that person also <laughs> made a fake dream account to then gas up yeah. John Swan's account. And it, 
it the story just no, it, doesn't, it doesn't it doesn't make any sense and the thing is there's so many inconsistencies and something i didn't even mention on my stream which i think is such such is actually a really big deal is that in between the time period where he claimed he didn't have access to his account and he he got hacked by the kid the 12 year old kid that he says did it um his according to harley which is the only the only witness because harley was the one that was being messaged the account never went offline so the account was online the entire time between when he claims he what didn't have access and then he messaged them saying he did have access and according to them because it, it was only a 10 minute period the account never went offline during that period so the account was online the entire time while he was apparently doing password resets and stuff um but there, but that, that wasn't something i mentioned but there's so many things that were just so inconsistent with what he was saying like I, saying it's a 12 year old there's perfect grammar. It was sounded just like him. I mean, on his account, like he was using common common words and stuff that he uses. He was speaking just like himself. And he said and he started the conversation with the person that he messaged by by talking about a previous conversation they had had before yeah. bef before this conversation, which which the kid wouldn't know about if he wasn't John Swan. Um, so there's just a bunch of, I mean, that's why, and the thing is, I wasn't even planning on, I wasn't even th trying to make it a big deal. Like I, I commented on some random subreddit that had 20 likes. And then like I, he took with it. Is it possible it, that the person that was on allegedly on John Swan's account went back and read those messages to know what that previous conversation was, or, or was it an audio conversation? No, no cause it, it, was, it was actually on Twitter. And so, and they didn't have anything on Discord at all. So the problem was that there, it was actually impossible because uh, Harley made a new Discord account and the conversation he said was on Twitter. So like, none John, of it. John Swan, if you were just trolling, why not just admit it? You know, I heard some people, some people in the commentary community uh, make the argument like, you know, why would John Swan do this? This would completely ruin his career. Well, John Swan only had 6K subs at the time, right? Like, yeah, at the time he had 6K and, and that's, that to me, that was another big thing is like back then I had like 1.6 million. He had 6K. He reached out to me and I, I, I thought I was being nice. I went on his, I, I did an interview with him on his, uh, on his channel for a documentary. And um, I just happened to see his DM. And then later this is, <laughs> this is being caused problems. I'm like, what the hell? Like I, I, that's what I get for, you know, doing something nice. And I, I with this really YouTuber, wish but. John Swan was here because you know, the entire commentary community is on John Swan's side, right? I haven't seen any yeah. commentator, uh, be on your side, Dream. And then, of course, Dream, y you and your massive fan base is on your side. And that's why I wanted yeah. to have this here because I feel like my audience, you know, many of my fans, like, don't, aren't fans of either of you, right? And so I thought it yeah. would be a great place to to have this conversation. Um, do you find it strange uh, recently that the uh, entire commentary community seems to be at your head? Well, I mean, I, I mean, I don't find it strange. I mean, I think it's, I think I, I kind of expect it because of the fact that, you know, largely my fan base, because they're young and a lot of them are, um, a, a lot of them are, are girls. And, and that's something that's different than like the commentary community's fan base and, right. and stuff. So it's like, they're, they're completely different. It's like my, my fan base uh, are, are mostly younger and, um, and Minecraft and whatever. And then their fan base is like, I don't want to say like the edge lords or whatever, but you know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's like, they just clash obviously. And so it's, I think that a lot of times they'll take things that my fan base does or that, you know, people have done that people think is because of my fan base and then go, Oh, well that's dreams fault or whatever. And then that makes them not really, not really like me very much, even though I feel like I haven't done much in that regard to make them not like me. But, um, but I say they, that, that's the way they feel, I, but I'd I, say with, with John Swan, he's in that community. So it's kind of like, they're all friends and stuff. So it makes sense to me. I've just been seeing a, a, like blatant hypocrisy in the commentary community over this subject. Like Optimus, a, a, a YouTuber and a commentary, uh, channel that I, I love and respect, uh, you know, he was putting out, uh, tweets basically saying that you need to denounce the, the behavior, uh, of your audience and whatnot. And I'm thinking to myself, like, when are commentary channels who are criticizing other YouTubers, when are they out there, you know, making statements, denouncing, uh, you know, their fans reaction to uh, content that is highly criticizing a YouTuber? Normally that fan base yeah. is talking smack about that YouTuber along with the commentator that they're, they're not denouncing. Like it, yeah, it just seems like uh, the commentary community in, in many ways is one opinion. 
And I wish we could get to a place uh, back in the day where there were multiple different opinions and ideas were, um, you know, debated and battled because that doesn't seem to be happening anymore. Everyone seems to be, you know, on one team with one opinion, uh, which, you know, yeah. is very much like your fan base, right? Your fan base, is, you know, is on one team with one opinion. And that's why, uh, you know, it would be really interesting if we had both sides to see the outcome uh, of a neutral platform like this one. Yeah. Well, I, when I, I, cause I reached out to him telling him like, look, like all the, ev- all this, I mean, I have like 50 screenshots. Um, I'll say, I'll, I'll send you them, but, uh, but I, that I was showing on stream and stuff. And I was like, all of it, it's like, so, so obvious that it's not a, it's not a 12 year old. It has to be either you, one of your friends, something. And I was thinking to myself, I was like, why would he not admit it then? But the reason he wouldn't admit it is because of the fact that they said the N word in these screenshots. So it's like, if he admits it's him, then he's, you know, throwing his career out the window because then he gets canceled for being racist and right. whatever else, you know? So it's like, I think that's probably why, because to, to be fair, if you look at it, it's like, other than that, it's not that big of a deal. Like he's making, he, like, obviously to me it is, but to anyone else it wouldn't be. He's just trolling, you know, whatever. He had 6K subs. He was trolling probably with a friend of his, um, messing around and whatever. And that's not, you know, that's not the biggest deal other than the fact that they said the N word. And I think that's why, that's why no matter what happens, they probably, they, they probably wouldn't admit, oh yeah, that wasn't, it wasn't a 12 year old, whatever. Um, just, just because of that. And I think that kind of causes, causes the problem, but I, I never planned on making it a big deal or anything. I feel like it's just that, and especially because of the commentary community, likes picking up on things like this, especially involving me. Cause it gets views. Um, it just causes like this small thing that was like a 20 like Reddit comment about my opinion to spiral into like John Swan versus dream drama alert. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, that's kind of the, uh, I don't know. Right. It's interesting how the internet works. Uh, let's change subjects uh, real quick. Uh, Minecraft and Minecraft creators are on the top of the YouTube community right now. You guys trend like every single day. Why do you think that is, right? Because, you know, I'm an, I'm an old enough YouTuber to remember like back in 2012, 2013, Minecraft was huge and then it died and now it's back again and the biggest creators are Minecraft creators. Why do you think that is? Uh, I think that a lot of Minecraft creators, and I, 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 I will take credit for this myself, have started to make content that is more friendly to all ages. It's so like my content. I would say you could enjoy, you could enjoy whether you're, you know, 30 or you're, or you're, you know, 13. Um, and I think that's that is the biggest difference because there's a lot of people now that have grown up playing Minecraft that are now 25, 30. Um, you know, how, however old that played Minecraft when they were younger, or that have kids that play Minecraft, they know Minecraft, um, that are able to enjoy Minecraft content because a lot of creators have started shifting in that way where it's like, you know, Tommy in it, obviously he is, he's more, he's more like child humor or whatever, but he's cursing and, uh, you know, more, more toxic or whatever. And I know that that's kind of a lot of creators have started kind of going that route where it's more, it's more, it's more content for all ages versus just like back in the day, a lot of it was very, was very kid, kid friendly and yeah. stuff was the top creators. And I think nowadays the top creators are, are a mixture where they're friendly to kids, but also, um, but also adults could enjoy watching them. Do, older people do you could think enjoy. this is a, another fad or is it here to last? I think that time will tell. I think, I think it really, really will be how the, you know, the, the YouTubers respond and how they adapt. And I think that the problem with a lot of gaming creators is they don't, cause they're just, they take it. Oh, I'm just playing a game or whatever. But I think if they're smart, um, including myself, then yeah, I think, I think it, it could last for a long time. Most but. gaming, uh, entertainers right they play a game when it's super popular and then they switch to another game uh you know when that game is the trend do you think that you'd ever be in that situation where you're playing another game other than minecraft oh no i mean i've said i've said many times publicly like i I will on my channel on my main channel i will never upload i will never upload another another game or anything other than minecraft like that's my that's been my plan for the longest time i played minecraft since like 2011 so um, I, I, Minecraft is literally the only game I actually play. Like I don't play any other game really. And I have never, I've played maybe like CSGO back in the day. It's really what I played. I play Among Us like occasionally, but I never even, even during the Among Us fab, never even uploaded Among Us on my channel. I uploaded an Among Us in Minecraft video on my second channel. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I think I'm, I'm more of a, like one, one game guy, but I think that's, I think a lot of creators aren't like that, but. Uh, one thing I find interesting is there's many YouTubers, very popular YouTubers right now that have never shown their face. And you're one of them. Uh, Corpse Husband, it just comes to mind. Uh, you were supposed to do a face reveal in the YouTube Rewind that Mr. Beast uploaded. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that was a great meme. But <laughs> at, at some point, are are you going to do an actual face reveal? 
Oh yeah, no. The, the problem is like I I've wanted to do one for a while, but um, but when the the you know everything that was going on with the virus and stuff, so um, my friend George, who's in the UK, can't even come to America, and um, he's in all he's like in all my videos basically, and we're really good friends, and um, I want to be able to do it. I want to be able to do it in a setting. I don't want to just like post a video or something. I, I want to be able to do like a I don't know uh, some event or something, and you can't do that with what's going on. So. Obviously, the bigger and bigger you get, um, the more controversy uh, and the more things get blown out of proportion. Are you worried yeah. about that? I mean, look, you, you had 1 million subscribers and a year later you had what 15 or 16 million. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm not, I'm not worried about, I mean, I, I think that there's, I think with everybody, everybody goes through, I mean, even people who are like, in my opinion, are like the, the nicest, like talking about Jimmy, like he's like Mr. Beast. He's like the nicest guy I know. Like he's like the nicest guy I know, the most real guy I know. Yep. And he still gets canceled for dumb stuff, you know, now and then that's like, oh, he's like accusing him of stuff. And that's just like I think it's gonna happen to any big YouTuber, even if you're even if you're perfect. With me, I mean I'm pretty young, so I feel like if I do anything I've done I've definitely done stupid stuff in the past, but I do stupid things, I learn from them and then I grow and I think my audience recognizes what, that and what i find interesting about you and it's something i respect is you respond like if there's a controversy you will respond to it and and, yeah. and you'll fight it right there's and i say this all the time to youtubers like if you're being accused of something you didn't do you better respond like being quiet yeah. is not going to help you whatsoever it is not going to go away especially in this day and age and I, I, I think more YouTubers need to, to get on that. But hey, man, thank you so much for coming on. Before we go, anything else you, you'd like to mention or bring up or talk about? Uh, no, um, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Any words directly to John Swan? Uh... <laughs> Good luck, I guess. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't want it to become this. So this um, is Drobler. I had to it ask happens. that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe. We have a big interview tomorrow. We're gonna have Phase Banks on. We're gonna have uh, Logan Paul's uh, buddy Mike. Uh, there's there's some stuff going out with Clout House version two that we're gonna talk about. So make sure you're subscribed to those notifications. Dream, thank you for coming on, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.